We are excited here on Good Karma Wrestling at GKW to welcome in one of the greatest to ever do it, the 16-time world champion who's going to be visiting some Florida dispensaries with Ric Flair Drip. Of course, we're talking about the nature boy, Ric Flair. Rick, thank you so much for uh, for the time. And we can talk about, uh, let's go ahead, Ric Flair Drip. Like, where? How did this start? And, and you're going to be visiting some dispensaries uh, if you happen to be in Florida over the next couple of weeks, correct? I actually we drop you yeah, on Thursday and Friday of next week. So um, I'll be in Jacksonville and Orlando. And what I'm about? Going, I'm going to Miami Monday um, for a, a cannabis related uh, opportunity as well. What about this made you excited and you wanted to jump into it? Uh, I think Chad Bronstein, the, 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 who is, I report to directly, but actually he's, um, I don't know, I, I, I get confused as to who the, who the CEO is and who's the boss. <laughs> um, but I worked directly for Chad and Adam and uh, Aristotle, the three of them, and uh, they just, uh, Chad approached me, we keep boats next to each other, here's the Marriott, and, and asked me, and I, I had been approached probably three or four other times during the, over, over the last, God, maybe five or six years, and I just didn't think that, um, I didn't realize how socially acceptable it is. Um, and I definitely had forgotten how popular it is. <laughs> that makes sense. I mean, it is very popular, my God. And, from and, and, and on top of that, it's, it's very lucrative. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing that's ever, it is the best thing that's ever happened to me in my entire career. So well, thankful. sort of along those lines, <laughs> I'm very from thankful. a competitive I'm standpoint, fun. how do you find yourself sort of pushing yourself to make sure you're the best at this? You've been the best at so many things. How much do you find yourself wanting to be the best at this now? Well, I just, well, I, 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 I think the, uh, of given the opportunity, I've always tried to be the best of whatever I, whatever endeavor I you know, put myself in, and uh, I think the packaging and uh, um, the fact that I can use my trademarks, things, sayings like "woo" and all that. Um, the edibles will be called "woo chews," and uh, just the, just the whole presentation, I think, is um, spectacular. And of course, they. They're responsible for all of it, but I, I'm, I'm really taken back by how well it's doing. So uh, with WrestleMania weekend, you got to be there on the Friday because you were inducting the great Muda into the WWE yes. Hall of Fame. What did that mean to you to be able to to come back and, and be able to induct someone like the great Muda? Well, it's my eighth time there. So it, it, I think it's fantastic. I was, I was very excited that they invited me. Um, I've been uh, I've been inducted twice myself, and uh, I've inducted Harley Race, Roddy Piper, Sting, Steamboat, Muda, and then myself twice. So I, I don't, now I've not, but I've been inducted twice. So I think it's a great honor, and it's almost I think almost as recognizable as the fact of it's not compared to my World Championships, but it's. it's it's, it, I, I think of the, the Hall of Fame as a great honor. Speaking of WrestleMania, you know, it's commonplace <laughs> in wrestling. You have a big show, and at the end of it, the name you're talking about stealing the show is a flair. Charlotte Flair and Rio, one of the matches of the weekend. How proud did that make you watching this weekend? It was the best match of the weekend. That's a, I'm not, I'm not going <laughs> to You're not going to get me to budge on that. I would we agree. Don't worry. I, I was I was extremely proud of her. My gosh, who wouldn't be? Did you guys see it? Oh, it was yeah. spectacular! It was spectacular. We all said it was our match of the weekend as well. So you're, yeah, you're that, not that, alone there. That, that, that German, that German off the second rope where she oh. rotated. Come on. What you, you you mentioned? You know, in terms of being in the Hall of Fame at your World Championships, where where does her career rank? Because oh every time God. she's in WrestleMania, Rick, she's in like the women's main event picture. She's actually main evented a couple of times, and she's always in the title picture every year when WrestleMania comes around. Because that's how good she is. It just speaks volumes for how good she is. I mean, there's no other way to put it. And she gets better. She's better now than she was two years ago. And she just keeps getting better. She's driven to be to be in a league of her own, and she is. 
Rick, it was know, interesting that, that the opportunity, the, 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 a little bit of advantage she has that she's wrestled, um, you know, so many of the girls that aren't there now that have come and gone. And uh, you pick up a little bit from everybody you learn along the way that has something to offer. That's what makes you better. And then you, she sits back and thinks about what she can do that nobody else can do, and she does it. I, know, I never thought she would try that German. If she was five foot four, I could see it all day long. But at five ten, that's a huge bump. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can land on your head and break your neck, and just as easily as you can land frontwards. So every time she does stuff like that, I think it's like the first time she did the corkscrew moonsault. She just separated herself from everybody else, keeping in, keep in mind again that she's five ten and one hundred and fifty pounds. Those things are performed a lot harder, are a lot harder to perform when you're when you're five five and one hundred and five pounds or ten pounds. What which is taking nothing away from the smaller girls, it just makes her. It just shows up what a superb athlete she is. How's she doing now, Rick? Uh, how much time is she going to take away from the ring after WrestleMania? I don't know. I, I tell you, I, and I think it's important that she she takes her private life for. Very seriously, when she's away, I mean, we, we you know we just talk, but I don't ask her questions about her private life. You know, it, it, we need a break sometimes from wrestling. <laughs> um, we do talk about wrestling, you know, when, when something big is coming up. But her private life is a private life. I mean, I know where they're going. I'm just not gonna. I know where they are, what they're doing. I'm just not gonna discuss it. And we don't, we don't, we just don't talk about business anymore. I mean, we do enough of that and. Our relationship is so special. Um, you know, we, we we've we've gotten around that. We used to talk about it all the time, but she's so good now. She doesn't need any any advice from me. The other big part of WrestleMania, Cody Rhodes finishing the job. What does the Rhodes family mean to the Flair family? Well, I'll give you an example of what I was going to say. You know, in in reference to the the tag match going on last, as opposed to Charlotte and Rhea. If factions were more important than than singles title championships, I, I know the titles were involved both ways, but in my entire career, the, the, no tag match went on as when I was a world champion and after me. And that's what I meant by tradition. I didn't mean they broke it that but that was a comment made. I'm talking about tradition in my career. And, um, but if that were the case, if storylines and, and, uh, um, um, if storylines are more important than the value of putting a traditional, like Cody won the men's Royal Rumble, he wrestles Roman. You know? Rhea worked just as hard, if not harder, to win the women's, and then she's in the semi-main event. I, I don't agree with that because if storylines were the best, then anybody that Dusty Rhodes was in the ring with uh, uh, against the Horsemen, Dusty and Sting against the Horsemen, Dusty and Nikita against Horsemen, Dusty and Nikita, Dusty and the Road Warriors, I, I. That then that would have gone on. That would have gone on before me. It never did, because there was no greater faction, no greater storyline than the Rhodes and the Flares and the, and the Horsemen. That that's where I'm. That's where that comment's coming from. Gotcha. If a storyline means more than the belt, than a single championship match, see, they don't talk about. They 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 have mentioned how many times somebody won the world tag team titles, but. It, doesn't carry the same weight as John Cena, Rick Flair, and all Charlotte's 14. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm very confident she'll break our record. Yeah, yeah. I mean, very, very possible as well. Um, speaking of factions, I mean, it seemed like for a while factions didn't mean as much in professional wrestling, but now we see it more, whether it's AEW um, and, and the Blackpool Combat Club or the trios titles that they have over there. Obviously, the bloodline over the last, you know, two and a half years in, yeah. in WWE. 
as someone who is in the most famous faction of all time in the Four Horsemen, do you like that factions are becoming more prevalent in today's professional wrestling? Well, I like it from the standpoint that, um, I mean, Ro Roman's the flagship, so and I think Roman's phenomenal. I, and I love the Usos. I mean, and I'm, I'm not talking about all, who could outwork anybody. I'm just talking about tradition, okay? Mm -hmm. The Usos are phenomenal workers. I love Kevin Owens. Sammy's good. Roman's a great, a great uh, flagship for our company. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I think so. I, I, I think the storylines like that, I like it because they're getting more people involved. And it's, it's, it's such a hard industry to get a break in. I mean, the, the best thing they ever did with Dominique was put them together. And, and Dominique has got a ton of talent. I mean, he does, but, but turning him heel and that was, was great. And I mean, you would have never expected that from him a year ago, correct? A hundred percent. And look at him now. He's fabulous as, as is his dad. Uh, Rick, I tell Brian up here and Gabe a lot about the territory days. Cause that's how I grew up, grew up in Chicago. So I'm a Vern Gagne guy, AWA guy. Yeah. Uh, I was always wondering if, you didn't hang your hat in Charlotte and decide to be a Charlotte guy and a Jim Crockett guy. <laughs> would you have, would you have lived full time for Eddie Graham in Florida? Was that your second choice? No, I, I would have. I never. I never even thought about it after leaving. The Carolinas were it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, Eddie had a nice territory, but the Carolinas were just starting to grow when I got there. And you know, by the time I left, we were. But by the time they sold the company, we were settling out Philadelphia, Baltimore, and uh, we got in that, that lousy building. We didn't, not the Capitol Center, but we got when we got to DC, we were selling that out. So, and a couple of times we went to the Meadowlands. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that was Crockett or WCW, but anyway, we did very well there. So, um, I think if the I've said this a thousand times, if the Crockett's had stayed east of the Mississippi. With the, we'd still be in business. How, how was and, it like wrestling in Florida, though? For you? Until until Turner, the, Turner Turner was great. All the I mean the uh, Super Channel was great, you know, and, and it reached a few people on the West Coast. But if it had been the strength that it is now, um, the cable the cable wasn't that strong back then. Um, so I'm just saying, and during that time frame, but we were on there now. Because the collection of talent we had was every bit as good as Vince's. My God, rock and roll, midnight. I mean, Road Warriors. We we had it all, and we had Dusty. We had Dusty doing a brilliant job of booking. You mentioned Vince. Obviously, WWE in the headlines this week: the merger with the UFC and Endeavor. What does it mean to you to see Vince McMahon sort of get this big moment and ultimately have a boss now for the first time in his life? Well, that that remains to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got I got I'll have to see I'll have to hear that meeting. He pretty I imagine he'd be pretty tough to boss around. <laughs> he may be he may have to negotiate, but that, he's not gonna get bossed around. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I love Dana, and uh, Dana's pretty tough too. I understand. I've never had to negotiate with him, but <laughs> Vincent Man been around a long time, guys, and he's, he's he's just a great guy. And I, I just hope that they, you know, I don't I don't want to see the same thing, and I don't I don't think it can possibly. Vince is too smart for that, but I don't want to see the Endeavor people. Um, Take over wrestling. It's a, it's a different animal, you know. Where where Ted just hired all his friends to run WCW, and it just failed miserably. And then you know the other guy that ran the business like like it was an ATM. And that's why they're not there today. Not because of lack of talent. You just can't pay people that aren't worth what they think they are ten times. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I, we're talking as a VSPN. I cannot explain, I, I can understand how Ben Simmons is getting a paycheck. 
<laughs> How would it? They're getting a million dollars to sit home. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, no, not a million, millions. Millions. Yeah. Millions. Yes. <laughs> Lots of S's there. Zion, I get because it's a legitimate injury. He's a, he's a big guy. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But Ben, I mean, I, I, I respect guys. He was my favorite in college, but man, the pros have been rough for him. But he'll, yeah. they always get paid. I wish I knew where the money came from. <laughs> <laughs> And by the way, since we're talking sports, yeah, let's do it. LeBron James is still the best basketball player alive today. And if you don't think he is, how does a guy average 30 points a game at 38? Nine rebounds and eight assists, or 32, what they average in 32 a game? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's and he's not he's not the best anymore. <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> He's so far better than everybody else. It's unbelievable. And you know what else? Tomorrow, if you want to go in the NFL draft, you could be you be the best tight end in football. Yeah. <laughs> what do so you have? He's, what do you have? Eighty-eight touchdowns in high school. <laughs> yeah, but before he decided to stop playing and focus on basketball. Yeah. <laughs> is is the NBA? Is basketball the one the sport you pay attention to the most? Then. I love it during playoff season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love the Lakers. I got I got to have a guy that I. That I like it. I've, I've, I I love Michael. I grew up in Wilmington, North Carolina. I met him when I was 19. So, of course, I love the Bulls, um, as everybody did. But I met LeBron when he was 18. He used to come out to the Richfield. Uh, it was at a big, we, we called the White Elephant in Cleveland. It was a, that old arena. I was like, cut, you know, in the middle of nowhere with his friends and watched the matches. And then I've had an opportunity to meet him a couple other times. Phenomenal guy. But man, what an athlete. Holy Christ. You guys ever see when he used to hold his own slam dunk contest? When he'd throw the ball against him? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of the relationship with in the women's game? I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. <laughs> what do you think of the relationship in the, in the women's game, how it's grown in college uh, basketball? Reese and uh, Caitlin Clark? I love it. That's I love it. It's good heat, isn't it? The attitude. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it can't have started it, though. Yeah. Yes. She sure is, did. Isn't I, it I, amazing, I, though, about how much of those pro wrestling things make their way into, I mean, obviously everything that you've done, but now, I mean, John Cena and the You Can't See Me, it's made its way into the women's basketball. I know. I know. Well, John's a big player, making no mistake. I'm, I got a lot of time for John Cena. He's been very influential. And, um, you know, it, it was a it's a big role to jump in John's shoes, and Roman has done a great job. As a wrestling guy, how proud does it make you to see the Cenas, the Batistas, the Rocks of the world that go out there that sort of use wrestling as their jumping off point, but are you know mega stars now? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I'm not surprised by any of that. Dave has always been very clever. I'm I'm he, his new movie just came out this week, I think, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Another um, Guardian thing. The mm -hmm. next one. Yeah, Guardian this soon. They have that knock on the cabin that's out there yeah, now. He's I mean, all over the place. He's, he has done such great stuff. I'm not surprised at all by that. Um, he's a very determined, really smart guy. He had a tough upbringing, so he's taken advantage of, of the things that have come his way, and he's done a great job with them. And uh, John, I mean, John just, he's Mr. Wonderful. And uh, what what John has been able to be successful at, uh, he is so committed and works so hard. Very, very similar to Dwayne. You know, Dwayne's nonstop, one movie after another. I love it. And he to arguably be the biggest star in Hollywood, saying a lot. So taking, you know, taking Charlotte out of it, who do you enjoy watching now? Who are some of the favorites that you have in professional wrestling that that you want to and enjoy when you kick back on the couch and and turn on professional wrestling? Who do you like watching? Um, aside from Charlotte, well, I like watching all of them. I mean, I, um, I, it's part of my life. I I, I think everybody that's up on the roster is, is is good, and I enjoy them all. I mean. I, I can tell the ones that are comfortable in their role and the ones that are 
trying to figure the trying to figure the way around. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, I like that faction with the Dominic. I like um, I love the Usos. I like the Bloodline. I don't know what they're going to do with that. Don't keep if they keep going, but if, if it's work, as long as it's working, stay with it, right? Yeah. And uh, oh, my, well, one of my big time favorites is Brock. I love Brock. Yeah, <laughs> he, he just he, he, he's a hell of an athlete, guys. I mean, Brock Lesnar is a world class athlete and a badass. Yeah, I think just to get that tattoo on your sternum, that just kind of tells him how big yeah. of a badass he is. I can't imagine getting that. Brock Lesnar spells badass. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, not, he, not, he, not only he was a wrestler, he's, but also... He, he, he's today's version of our Harley race. Wow. <laughs> and no one was tougher than Harley race. Yes. Yeah, you didn't want... You didn't want you, if you grabbed a hold of Harley race, you were going to lose an eye. And you get a ear <laughs> missing, a nose, nose bitten off. You, you, weren't getting out, you weren't getting out of there easy. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, you got to give us a Harley race story. I've heard you say a few. Can you give us one story of, with Harley in the locker room? Okay. Do you remember Kurt Henning? Yes. Okay. So Kurt was just breaking into Minneapolis, and, he, and Larry, his father, sent him or Vern sent him to Bob Geigel in Harley's territory. And uh, this, is the, this is the way. I've got two great ones, okay? This is... <laughs> <laughs> so Kurt Henning, I'm Kurt now. Hi, Mr. Race. What do you want to do for a finish tonight? Or what are we doing for a finish tonight? What's your finish, kid? <laughs> Drop me off a top rope. I'll move. <laughs> 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 Better one than that. This is this this is this is the best. So Triple H had just come into Atlanta, right? And Harley was managing Leon Vader there, right? Oh. And so now I'm now I'm Hunter again now. I said, Hunter, I, I said, Harley, this is um uh, Paul Levesque is gonna be a part of the company now. Harley shook his hand and said, didn't stand up for anything, did it? Who broke in, kid? Killer Kowalski. He's the shit. <laughs> oh, that's the best. Hey. <laughs> The rattlesnake thought he had me fooled as he stood two feet from me in my rocking chair on the porch. So I baited him with my right and <coughs> with my left. <laughs> Harley. <laughs> I love that. God. <laughs> hey. <laughs> You don't want nothing to do with Harley Race. I'd say, Harley, let's go have a drink. I want to, I want to play pool. Here's another one. He'd go over to a bar like in Fort Worth. I can remember like yesterday, all the cow girls, cow guys, right? 10 quarters on the table waiting to play, right? Mm -hmm. You queue off the wall, everybody look at him. <laughs> Knock all the quarters off their table. <laughs> you go, I got the winner. Problem. <laughs> yeah, a couple of times there were several problems. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of times there were several problems. <laughs> wow. So good. Oh. Yeah, he loved, he was the world champion, boys. <laughs> he let everybody know what. <laughs> the SMU football players found out in a bad way one night. <laughs> Rick, before we get you out of here, we, we got to know you had Ric Flair's last match last yeah. summer. Yeah. Is, is that I, I, for I, sure? I, 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 That's going to be it? 
That's going to be it? <laughs> yeah, but I wish I could do it again. <laughs> Who's going to say no to you? Who's stopping you? Oh, it's just not realistic. I mean, but <laughs> I, it, we we had that thing down to a fine art. But I woke up. I was I was fixated on Wayne two eighteen, and so the night you know it was me right. I'm out drinking all night. I wake up and I weigh two twenty two, so I ate three egg white bites and a cup of coffee right all day long. So I did, of course, you know, the anxiety, the emotion, da da da, da everything right. So I walked out there and I felt great. And then all of a sudden, I got lightheaded. So I made a mistake of saying to Jay, I don't, I don't feel good. But then, of course, there went like panic across the ring. You know, like it was my heart or something. It was nothing. I just got lightheaded. And um, <laughs> to, the best light, the best light of the night is <laughs> so after Manny jumped on a. Uh, Jumped on top of um, Jeff or Jay, I can't remember. And then the brass knucks, right? And Manny, my son, I was going, you have to wake up, sir. You have to wake up, sir. <laughs> 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 to put the knucks on my hand. <laughs> you, have to, you have to wake up, sir. <laughs> like, Manny, you should just slap me and then get up, you old bastard. <laughs> Manny, Manny's so polite. <laughs> You have to wake up, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Respect, uh, even in the ring. Respect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, God. Rick, I just want to thank, say, any, thank you so any, much for the time, any, man. Anytime I get to do something with my daughter and Manny, those are the highlights of my life right now. Well, it, it was certainly a highlight for plenty of people who got to tune into it. Uh, thank you so much for the time. Best of luck diving into um, all the different cannabis stores you're going to be visiting in Florida with Ric Flair Drip. I'm sure, just like everything else, it's going to be one of the best. Listen, you guys have a happy Easter weekend. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Harley. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. All right, thanks.